Hi, in the next two videos we will look at spell checking and we will start with a very simple algorithm called minimum edit distance. So in the last two videos we've been looking at how writing is a technology. It's a technology to represent spoken language or signed language. In general, writing is the technology to represent natural language. And spelling rules are a part of that technology. Somebody invented them for various reasons, and they have become a part of using that technology. And when we use any technology, there are moral implications to how we're using it and um, how, we, how we choose to deal with problems in it. Now that we have discussed that, we can take a look at how the computer can find, can find variations in your spelling or spelling mistakes, knowing how loaded those two words are. Spelling variation can come in two forms. Sometimes it can come from non-words. For example, when you're typing in English and instead of typing the word giraffe, you produce the word graph with your keyword. The word graph does not exist in the English language. So this is a non-word. And we would need to find um, the closest real word to that non-word. Errors can also come from real words. For example, typing a word that does exist, but is out of context. For example, in the sentence, she's walking across the desert, what it actually says there is she's walking across the dessert with two S's. So dessert does exist in English, it's just not, uh, it shouldn't be written with two S's right there. In this video, we will look at a method to find non-word corrections. Let's say we have a beautiful corpus of English, and from that corpus, we select the unique tokens, and we make them into a big list, which we're going to call our dictionary. This dictionary has all the possible uh, words in English. And somewhere in that dictionary, there's the word intention. Suppose that we have this beautiful dictionary file, and then we get some input file, some text, and the person who wrote the text in one of the paragraphs wrote intention. And then further round they, down, they wrote intention. And then the final paragraph, they wrote exemption. So none of those three words exist in the English language. So we need to find the words that are closest to them. We could do this by performing simple operations like insertion of letters, deletion of letters, and substitution of letters. For example, to transform intention into intention, we would need to insert an I. To transform intention into intention, we would need to delete the C. And to transform extension into intention, we would need to substitute the X with a T. We could assign an arbitrary cost to each of these operations. For example, they could all cost the same. Maybe it'll cost you one unit of effort to insert a letter because we insert one character. Maybe it would cost you one unit of effort to delete a character like the C in the technician. It could cost you one unit of effort to substitute something, for example, extension into intention. Some implementations of these algorithms sometimes uh, have substitution as with a cost of one and sometimes have substitution with a cost of two because you could also think of substitution as uh, being two things deleting the x and inserting the t so individual implementations may vary but what's constant amongst all implementations of this is that you need to assign a cost to the operations let's assign a cost of one to all of them for this example Let's say we want to measure the distance between the word kitten and the word sitting. In order to, to transform kitten into sitting, we would first need to substitute the letter K with the letter S. And this operation will cost us one in this example. The I is fine, the two T's are fine. We need to substitute the letter E with the letter I, so that costs us one unit of effort. We need to substitute the, um, sorry, the N is fine. And then we need to insert a G 
because kitten doesn't have one at the end. So the insertion cost is one unit. In total, transforming kitten into sitting costs us three units of effort. We're going to call this the edit distance between kitten and sitting. So how can we use this for spell checking? We have our beautiful dictionary of English here, and we have an input document with some words. And in, in this document, we find the sentence, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. For each word in the input document, we're going to calculate its distance to the words in the dictionary. And with some luck, we will find them. For example, if we find the word road, we will f uh, if we have the input word road, we will find the word road in the dictionary. There will be a word such that the distance between dictionary between road and the dictionary and road in the input is zero because they're identical. If we have such a word, then it means that road is correct and it does not need correction. How about when we keep uh, making progress into the sentence and then we find intentions? What's going to happen is that you will not find intentions in the English dictionary. So then you need to calculate which word in the dictionary would be closest to intentions according to your edit distance function. For example, uh, transforming intentions into kittens would have a cost of eight. Transforming intentions into flowers we have a, will have a cost of 13. And transforming intentions into intentions will have a cost of one. So we'll find the candidates that have the shortest edit distance. Um, and hopefully there will be a candidate that has the minimum edit distance. In this case, intentions for intentions and not flowers or kittens. We will then take that candidate with the minimum edit distance and suggest it as a possible correction so that intentions can be replaced with intentions, potentially. So we can use an algorithm like minimum edit distance to find suggestions for spelling corrections, and it can correct non-word errors. And by the way, the exact implementation of minimum edit distance is in your textbook in Joavsky and Martin. Uh, please write if you have any questions about it. And of course, go check it out if you're interested in the details of the implementation. This algorithm, however, cannot correct real word errors. If you get something like they were here, where were is W-H-E-R-E, -E, the computer will just say that, oh, there is a word where in the dictionary. That's fine. So we will not see it as a potential error. In our next video, we'll incorporate probabilities into our calculations so that we can find real word errors and find that the collocation they wear with an H is unusual and that it should be replaced with the more usual collocation they wear without an H.